Lydia, another another good round today. Was it as good as yesterday, or was it better than yesterday? The same score. Um, I don't know. I, I think I hit the ball better yesterday, uh, but then you know, in the back nine, I kind of got myself together and. No, I try to give myself, you know, some opportunities, but no, I was I was really close in a, in a lot of them. Um, you know, just they didn't drop. Uh, but I think I had one more bogey than yesterday, and uh, you know, it's good, you know, to come off with you know one or two bogeys at the end of the day ar around this track. And how do you feel? You had you were a bit you had a bit of a cough yesterday, and you didn't feel so well. Do you feel better this morning? Yeah, I feel definitely much better. Uh, you know, I wasn't coughing that much out there, so I haven't forgot that I had a cold. Yeah. Great. Questions, please. Is it on? On? It's on. Lydia, Kari said yesterday she expected the course to get incrementally more difficult with each passing day. Did you notice any difference in the course today to yesterday? And what sort of strategy changes, perhaps, if it does get firmer and faster? I mean, just playing in the morning, I guess that made the first couple of holes less firm than yesterday. I mean, as, as it, the time goes, uh, as the day goes, it just, the greens get firmer and firmer and just the sun bakes the greens out. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to get difficult. You know, maybe if I played today in the afternoon and yesterday in the afternoon, I would have noticed that it would, it would be a little firmer than it was yesterday. But yeah, I think it's gradually going to get drier and drier. I mean, it's meant to be around the 30s, uh, you know, Celsius, so I'm pretty sure it's going to get firmer as the, as the week goes. Lydia, could you talk us through your eagle on 15, yardage and style of shot and all that sort of stuff? Um, you know, I made an eagle on 14 yesterday, uh, and then, you know, just I was angry that I came off with a par today. Uh, you know, I felt like... It was, a, it was a hole that you know I could easily come come off with a birdie, but so I was kind of angry, and that kind of anger led me to hit an aggressive drive uh, on the 15th, uh, and you know I was on the left half, I guess left edge of the fairway, and you know I had it like 136 or something like that, and uh, I, I said eight could be a little long, so I decided to punch a nine iron, and it landed just left of the pin, and the mound kind of feeded it right to the hole. Yeah. Did you hit a hybrid into that hole yesterday? And what's the difference nine iron today versus hybrid yesterday? Yeah, I hit a hybrid yesterday, um, and that one it was my five hybrid, and I hit a low one chasing. And uh, you know, I hit my driver, so I had like at least forty yards less, um, you know, f you know, to the front of the green than yesterday. So I think that kind of made the difference, but. No, easily if you hit a driver you can be blocked out by the trees on the left and right so I kind of played it a little safer yesterday but because I was kind of so upset from the hole before I was like okay I'm I'm hitting driver so but it was a good choice yeah. <laughs> do you like the style of golf that Royal Melbourne presents Lydia some of the players don't it's different to what you play most weeks in America most say do you like the style of golf here do you feel it suits you yeah, I like it, you know, just I think having, you know, played these kind of sandbelt courses before, you know, as an amateur, it's definitely helping me, you know, to play when we come over. Uh, no, we definitely don't get any of these uh, kind of courses over in the States. So I think every course just is special in a way, but, you know, especially out here, it kind of makes you think a little bit more and, you know, try and be, you know, smart play, um, you know, as talking to David Ledbetter uh, yesterday and he was like, okay, Lydia, play smart. And I think that's a big key around here. Uh, Lydia, are you longer off the tee this uh, time round? Yes, um, I think I'm, well, like today or like yeah. this year? Yeah. Today? Are you, this time round, last year, are uh. you, what, what's... how have you added to your drive? Um, I've actually had a new driver. Uh, I. It's a f I changed, I uh, started this year, uh, you know, it's the um, Big Bertha Alpha 815 Double Diamond, <laughs> uh, uh, Callaway driver, um, and uh, it's good, aren't I? Aren't I good? <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I used to use the Callaway x Hot too, and um, t when I changed my golf ball too, to the Callaway ball, and no, it was a really good combination between this new driver and, and the new ball. And I think 
I've increased maybe in five yards and five yards might sound small but you know, I'm still increasing yardage so I definitely think I'm hitting a little longer uh, than this time last year and you know, I've been working hard you know, trying to activate you know, the important muscles uh, with my trainer TA. I'm interested in what you said, you know, David Ledbetter told you to play smart. You just said before that you played angry on the top of the 15th tee there and you probably did well down the 17th too after another bogey. Does it fluctuate more than it appears visually? Like, do you, do you get angry? Do you play angry? I get angry, but then, you know, sometimes my anger is good because, you know, like in Ocala, I slammed my putter after, you know, three putting two holes in a row and then I made five birdies in a row, so... <laughs> Maybe it's a good thing, you know, not not too overly aggressive, but, you know, I I think a little bit of anger is good because, you know, it just kind of lets the steam out. And sometimes I've had experience where it's kind of, I've like packed it in and, you know, it's definitely not helping me because I'm still mumbling, you know, oh, you're an idiot or whatever. So, but I think just you really have to be patient out here. Uh, and, you know, my caddy Jason said, you have to try and not get frustrated around the course like the Royal Melbourne. Yeah. So now we've seen you play a couple of more rounds here. How, how valuable is Jason to you? So we saw you today off 18, go up the first, etc. Um, is is he proving like super valuable to you right now? Yeah, I mean he's a Melbourne person. Uh, he's he's a local guy, and uh, you know he's had a lot of experience, and uh, you know he's had a lot of experience around these kind of tracks too. So. You know, he's kind of, when I'm angry, he's kind of keeping me back, you know, trying to go as planned. And uh, I think that's been really important because, you know, any other course you might get a little bit aggressive and you're fine, but here you can get just a bad bounce and, you know, you might end up having a really hard shot. Yeah. Uh, you touched on this, but hitting down the first when you played the 18th, could you talk us through that? Was it Jason's actual decision or your decision or have you done that before? Um, I didn't do it last time I was here in 2012. Uh, I don't even know if I had the distance to carry the, the trees. Um, but you know, this year in the practice round, Jason said if they tuck the pin right, it might be a good idea to, to hit down the first fairway. So you no, know, the pin wasn't very right, but it was still a good angle to come from the left side. So I kind of pushed it a little bit, but you know, I got I gave myself a pretty good angle in there. And uh, could you give us an estimate of the what would be a winning score? Do you think? Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think it all depends on you know how the wind is going to be this afternoon. And I mean, there are, I think the scores are better than what I expected. Uh, you know, it's it's a pretty tough track, and you know some holes when you're coming off with a par, it's it's a good score. So I'm really not sure, but. If it's two digits, uh, I'll be. It will be a pretty impressive, um, pretty impressive winning score. Can I ask you about one specific shot? You pulled your second into the third, just mm -hmm. above the bunker. Then you had to play the flop shot. How often do you play that shot? And that well, you, you look like super happy with that one. Um. Yeah. You know, I I pulled my nine iron and. I looked at it and I was like, I don't even know if I'm lucky that I'm not in the bunker or I'm not lucky that I don't have a stance. So, you no, know, it was, I was trying to cut it and it was meant to go right and like kind of feed down, but you know, I had the perfect distance where it kind of just carried the bunker and just feed down. So that was a pretty tough one and I don't think I get to play those, you know, very often. And especially because around the bunkers, it's cut very tight. You know, most of the times it runs into the, bunker around here but just everywhere even on the green is tough here <laughs> you kind of need to stick it close you can't you can't practice that shot very often you must just have to rely on your eye and your hands there yeah you know I try not to practice those um, but you know I did I this week is probably the week where I'll have more of those flop shots because you know you you've got shots where you have to hit over bunkers or over mounds so, I mean, it's tough, you know, off tight lies, but luckily, you know, I was in that kind of rough, so that made it a little easier. 